Hi there, and welcome to part two of my introduction to cloning. My name is Gwen McHale, and I'm a somatic therapist and educator. So as I was speaking to you in the first little video I made about phoning, phone is a trauma response. It's a way that we learn to keep ourselves safe when we feel threatened and overwhelmed by something that's happening to us. Pete Walker, who coined the term phoning, was exploring it primarily in relationship to complex or relational trauma. Um, so this is a trauma that arises in response to a failure to form healthy attachment with their primary caregiver. Um, it can also happen in other abusive relationships later in life um, and is often seen to be a response to uh, being in a relationship to somebody who's narcissistic or abusive or somebody who because of their own trauma is unable to form a healthy attachment. Um, so as a child, if I have a parent who is not able to form a healthy attachment with me, um, it leaves me in a very compromised position. Obviously, I don't have much power to just choose a different parent or to leave the relationship. Um, my survival depends on feeling an attachment with this person. From an infant's point of view, if mom or dad isn't here, isn't going to look after me, I could die. So really it's a life and death situation, which is incredibly overwhelming for this little one's nervous system and is a very big imprint. So a common way that we learn to adapt in that situation is to figure out you know, what mom or dad or whoever the caregiver is wants from us. So let's say that I'm a, a colicky baby and I'm in a lot of pain and I'm crying and for whatever reason, mom isn't able to handle that. Um, maybe it's triggering her own trauma uh, or she is just really not able to connect with me in my pain. Uh, let's say mom just, you know, when I'm crying, just leaves me in my cot, doesn't come near me. Um, then I'm learning that, you know, when I'm in pain, nobody is there for me. I'm learning that my signal for connection, which is, you know, my cry, isn't being responded to and, and it doesn't work. So eventually I'll stop crying because that's not working. It doesn't mean my pain's gone away. It just means I've given up and trying to connect when I'm in pain. Let's say I've noticed that when I smile and make little happy baby noises and seem well, mom does pick me up and she seems warm towards me and she makes eye contact. So what this might create in me is a kind of a split. It's like a, the development of a, a a persona or a kind of a full self. So even though I might actually be in pain, I might um, put on a face, you know, that says, love me, I'm here, I'm in time now, so I'm doing what you like. And mom might see that and think, oh, the baby's smiling, isn't she cute? I'll pick her up and give her some affection and attention. So this is the way that we can learn sometimes from such a painfully early age that who I am in my, what my actual experience is, my actual needs are, are not okay. So the phone response is always born of rejection. Rejection of some part of myself, rejection of some aspect of me. And so what gets rejected gets pushed into shadow and I present what is acceptable, what is going to receive love and attention and affection and connection. So we're wired to connect. And one of the most, if probably the most basic need that a little one has is for connection. If I have no connection with mom, you know, I may not get fed, you know, I may not be protected from predators, you know, I, I'm really vulnerable and really at risk if I don't have connection. So that is the primary motivation. So you can see how a phone response can be, um, very adaptive, it can work, um, it, can, it can actually meet that primary need. And our other needs for authenticity, self-expression, genuine intimacy, they're secondary at that stage and they get lost. 
But unfortunately, my survival mechanisms that I develop as a little one become like a, a nervous system blueprint. And so this now becomes my roadmap for how I navigate relationships and how I get my needs met and how I form, you know, romantic connections and friendships and work relationships and how I form relationships within my own being and how I engage with the, my creativity with the planet, you know, with everything. So if I'm kind of hardwired in that way because of my early experiences to negate my own needs or ignore my own needs or not even really know myself or put my focus on the other and what they want from me or what they need from me, then I'm really setting myself up for very unhealthy relationships later in life. Um, and of course that could show up in a number of ways, but I'm certainly in a very vulnerable position uh, in terms of intimacy and connection later on. Um, so often people start exploring these kinds of issues in therapy when they've met a lot of relational challenges or when they start to feel like um, that they're living a lie or that uh, they don't know themselves or that other people don't know them or they're very, very lonely or they can't maintain a healthy relationship or they've been in abusive relationships um, or they feel just very unfulfilled um, in lots of areas you know sometimes it's romantically sometimes it's spiritually sometimes it's creatively or in terms of career so we start to to kind of peel back the layers of the mask that we've put on you know and meet those rejected parts of us and learn to love them um, and it can take a long time and it can be very painful at times process and a profoundly beautiful process at times as well as i start to get to know who i really am and feel the pain that was pushed down a long time ago and feel the joy that was pushed down a long time ago whatever the rejected parts were so this really is the work of overcoming the phone response um yeah, I'm going to say more about this. I could talk about this all day. So that's my little snippet for today, really looking at phone in terms of relationship, in terms of being a survival strategy uh, when attachment fails or when attachment is um, really, really challenged early in life and looking at how it shows up in our adult lives. Um, okay, so... If any of this resonates for you, if you have any questions or queries or comments, please do leave them below. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take good care for now.